YouTube, it's Lena, and I'm here today with a review, but not a review of a movie. I am actually reviewing a mobile app game. Now, I am doing this because the uh, Google Plus group that I'm a member of, Geeks and Beauties, is doing a collab video. I will link everybody else who's doing the collab down below. This month's theme is Geek Week, so I decided to review something that I've been really geeking out over lately, and that is the Marvel Academy app on your phone. It is available on both Apple and Android products. I have an Android, so that's why I'm able to play it. It is an app created by TinyCo, which is the same people that created the Family Guy Quest for More Stuff app, I think it's called. I used to play it, but I don't anymore. So, the main idea behind the game is that all of your favorite Avengers and superhero characters are members of a academy. I mean, it's kind of like the ultimate fan fiction fantasy. AU, alternate universe, everybody goes back to high school. The only people who aren't teenagers in it or young adults, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be like teens or they're supposed to be like 18, 19 and college age. I haven't quite put that together yet. But the only ones that aren't, I got my notes down here, I got a lot of notes actually, are Fury, uh, the director Fury, Odin, you know, the king of Asgard, and Hank Pym, who was in the Ant-Man movie, he is the original Ant-Man, but in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he was kind of the older Ant-Man, whereas Scott was the newer Ant-Man. I can't remember his last name at the moment, unfortunately. But the idea is there, you know, you got the three teachers. Actually, there's a couple more now, but they're like, one of them is Ares, God of War, which kind of threw me off. I did not realize that was a comic book character, but apparently I was wrong. I mean, come on, Thor is a character. Why not Ares? Anyway, the idea is you have teachers that are teaching these students how to be a better hero so that they can go up against threats like AIM and Hydra. Those are the two big ones that are competing both for students, sorry, that's my phone, for resources to be evil and better, I guess. You know, the things that people are evil for. But along with getting heroes like Ant-Man and Wasp, the original Janet Van Dyne Wasp, not the Hope Pym Wasp that was in the movies, because the, they are not a couple, because one's a teacher and one's a student. So you start off with those two characters, and then your third character you get is Loki, which I love Loki, and I'm not surprised that they made him a very early you know, addition to the game because a lot of people that are going to be playing these type of games are people that are probably going to want Loki. And then you get Black Widow. I do like that they have a very good male to female ratio because a lot of people complain about the movies and a lot of the merchandise actually. You, they don't have enough female superheroes for little, little girls to look up to. You get all the guys but you never get that many of the girls. So I thought that was really neat that they've kept it you basically get one male and one female back and forth. Now, I wanna go into the pros of the game. First off, the animation style is adorable. Everybody is so cute. They look, they do look, especially the ones that already have actors playing them in movies, they really do kind of look like teenage versions of the actors. I will be inserting some pictures throughout. I wish I could take video of it but I do not have that kind of equipment, unfortunately. I did used to work for a company. I used to work for EA. I actually, I actually worked on an app there called The Simpsons Tapped Out, in case you've heard of it. So I am used to having to go over games like this, and we had this awesome equipment where we could record videos for it. I do not have that, unfortunately, which really sucks because if you guys could hear the voices of these characters, most of them are really great and spot on. And a couple of them are done by fairly famous people. Like, I believe Alison Brie does Black Widow, actually. So most of the voice acting is great. There is one character called Taskmaster. His voice kind of grates on my nerves. <laughs> but there's always going to be some actor that's going to... Well, the voice is going to grate on your nerves. So adorable animation style. All the characters look adorable. They start out in high school outfits or like high school versions of their costumes that are really cute and spot on. And you can upgrade these characters up to five levels. And for their third level, their outfit starts to change to look a little bit more like the 
comic counterparts that we're used to. And then on the fifth level, they change completely to what more like we're used to. Like I said, I do think they picked great characters. There's lots of comic only characters like there's Miss Marvel, not the Carol Danvers version, but the newer version. And she is so cute. I will try to insert a picture of her as well. Let's see. Like I said, lots of guys and girls. They have, um, they have Captain America. You get him about midway through of what they have so far. I'll get to that in a minute. They have, they had the Scott Ant-Man, who I'm trying to get right now, actually. They have, oh my goodness, what is... They have Falcon. That's who I'm trying to think of, poor thing. He is, he's actually one of my favorite characters on there. So, and amazingly, because most of these app games, it's, there's no storyline to it or no overarching storyline to it. This game has an overarching storyline that I think is actually one of my favorite things about it. And it has, has been what has really hooked me into it. There is major hints towards something that happened in the past, like the Academy is surrounded by something that they all call the time fog that you spend parts of the game clearing up. That's kind of your overarching idea. But, you know, Black Widow's got to be the spy and wanting to know everything that's going on. And there are major hints that something happened either in the past or maybe in a different universe. It's not terribly clear on that yet. Because, like, the first time you clear an area, you find an Iron Man mask. But Tony Stark apparently hasn't made his Iron Man armor completely yet. He just has, like, the little gauntlets in the boots. So why is there an Iron Man mask there? Hmm. And there's also something called Janet Van Dyne's... She has a little costume shop where either some of them you can purchase with the money you earn in the game. Some of them you have to purchase with real money because all of these games are like that. They have plenty of stuff that they want you to purchase with real money on. Not that shocking. Tiny Co. especially is kind of bad about it. But this game isn't... It could be a lot worse. I've played games that are much worse about it. But there are outfits that you can purchase that will either unlock different actions for the character or it will shorten some of their regular actions by a lot, which is very nice if you can unlock them. Now, those were most of my pros. There are some cons, though. First off, there's no Hawkeye in the game. All of the other major Avengers are there, and like I said, there's a lot of comic-only characters that are in there, but there's no Hawkeye. He, there is one little conversation that characters have that he appears, so I know there's a picture of him in the game, but so far there's no character. It also takes really long to get Hulk or Bruce Banner and Thor. Like, you can only get up to level 29 right now, which is, it's a newer game, so I'm not that shocked. These games kind of go out in steps. They update to getting you new levels every couple of weeks to a month or so. At least that's how it was when I worked at EA. I don't, and I think Tiny Co. is not that different. So you, you can only get Hulk at level 35, or you have to pay like $25 in their little shards is their in-app money thing to get him early. And Thor, you can only get at like level 50. And like I said, you can only get up to level 29 currently, which is kind of a bummer. I'm stuck at level 29 right now, but I still have parts of the story that I need to get to because you level up faster than you get to, you know, unlocking new characters and stuff by nature of, oh, well now I gotta grind for money so that I can unlock this character. Not that shocking. And the other thing about it, there are some art bugs that I've come across that kind of annoy me because, like I said, I did test games in the past. It's something I noticed really easily. And unfortunately, the biggest problem with this game, I think it's because it's kind of on the newer side. They haven't worked out on the bugs yet. It crashes fairly often and it grates on my nerves. I think it's honestly not the best compatibility with my phone. So I may just be having more issues with my phone than the game itself, but it crashes fairly regularly and fairly often. So, I, this is something that is a tiny co thing, not necessarily just this game thing. So you have to invite a character to join. Well, you can't just get the character right away. You have to pay money for them, which is not that big of a deal in Simpsons. You had to pay money too. But you don't just have to pay money. You have to earn items to unlock them, which has always kind of annoyed me about these types of games. So you have to earn text Books. And it's all the higher up in level you get, the more of these little textbooks you have to earn by doing these little side quests. Which you get a little bulletin board, you open, you start off with like three little side quest windows, and you get more as you go up. I have six now, and I think you can get at least up to nine. So everybody, you got to get the little textbooks for, and then they have their own little type of 
item that you earn for them. And it, it does get a little grating, but I really like the game overall. I really like the storyline. Like I said, the animation and the art style is really adorable and I love it. And overall, I do recommend it. You know, you don't, this is a game that it's not as pushy. It is pushy about wanting you to spend money, but it's not as needed to spend money as some of these other app games wind up being. So if you really like Marvel, and hey, if you really like kind of the fan fiction-y type things that people write online, this really might be for you. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I really appreciate it, and hopefully I will see you later. Bye!